space, apparently. Ah, so we hear the European Space Agency has released stunning new pictures of the comet orbited by the Rosetta spacecraft. They show evidence of violent explosions on the surface and features which look like sand dunes. The images could help scientists understand how the Earth was formed. Here's more from our science correspondent, Palab Ghosh. So alien and yet somehow strangely familiar. These look like weathered cliffs overlooking a perfectly still ocean of rock. New pictures from the Rosetta spacecraft show features on a comet that have never been seen before, like this hole the size of a football pitch. Next to it is the slab of material that once fitted on top like a lid, blown out by a mighty explosion. And most surprising of all, these bumps look like sand dunes, blown in the wind. But as we know, there is no wind in space. So just what has caused these incredible features? Well, scientists believe that ice just under the surface is slowly melting, creating a breeze. This blows over the rock to form the structures that look like sand dunes. But there's an even more remarkable discovery. Look closely inside this hole and you'll see bumps. Scientists call them goose bumps. They're all the same shape and size and could be the building blocks from which comets and possibly our own Earth were built piece by piece like a Lego model billions of years ago. Palab Ghosh, BBC News. Joining us now is Carol Mundell, who's Professor of Extra Galactic Astronomy Great title. At Liverpool, John Moores at University. Lovely to have you with us Good again, morning. Carol. Um, can I just get one question out of the way, Please since do. I made such a fool of myself with Carol a minute ago? Wind. Yes. So when we were doing our research and we were looking at some of the pictures that have been sent down, there was initially an impression that some of the ice that was breaking from underneath the surface was in fact wind. When the explosions, it looked like there was wind, but there's actually there's no wind in space. Well, on we the comet, told. there's actually a very thin atmosphere, and we actually think that some of the dust has been pushed across the surface of the comet. And obviously, as the comet gets closer to the sun, um, we'll see gas jets. The thing is, you think of it like a big dirty snowball. It's starting to evaporate as it heats up closer towards the sun, as the sun's radiation hits it. Um, and so, actually, when you look at a photograph of a comet in the sky, you see these tails. So there'll be a gas tail, there'll be a dust tail. So in fact, things are being, um, if you like, evaporated um, and removed from the, the comet as it goes around the solar system. Now, as we, can we hold on these pictures for a moment? As, as we're looking through them, maybe we can run them again. Cast, uh, we look at them, we're all like, oh, look, there's a crater there. Mm. What's your expert eye telling you as you're looking at these various things? So there's all sorts of features here. You can see these ripples, as you see in sort of the, the, the beach. You'll sometimes see ripples in, in the beach like this. There are also uh, these sorts of pits. On the edges of the pits, you can see what have been called goosebumps. So these are uh, lumps of material about three metres across, and we think that they might actually be the pristine material left over from the formation of the solar system. And this image here, just talk about Yeah, so some of these you actually see some cliffs. I mean, obviously, it's when you look at this, you don't have any scale, but some of the cliffs are, you know, several thousand feet high. So it's a, it's a phenomenally complex body. And the research that came out last night, there's a whole raft of papers that were published by the scientists who've been analysing these photographs. So when we say that these images or, uh, you know, various photographs can help us find out about the origins of Earth, what do you look for? Well, they've taken many photographs, but they've also measured the chemical content um, of this, this dirty snowball. And in fact, the scientists have found complex compounds, so things like methanol, so there's alcohol on there. Um, there's a little bit of water, but not as much water ice as we expected. So some of the big questions that we have on Earth, apart from how did the solar system form, which these also tell us about, these are like the building blocks of the, the solar system. Um, they, they have that pristine material still in them. Um, we've also asked questions like, where did our oceans come from? And there's a hypothesis that comets colliding with the Earth in the early formation of the Earth actually produced the oceans. And one of the big breakthroughs that came out last night was the measurement of the kind of hydrogen, so ordinary hydrogen and a slightly heavier form called deuterium. If you measure the ratios between the numbers of those kind of hydrogen atoms in the ocean, look at the same kind of atoms um, on the comet, and they've actually discovered that there's slightly different ratios. So in fact, certainly this kind of comet is not totally responsible for the oceans on Earth. So that, that problem hasn't been solved yet. And for a scientist, it must be a joy yeah. to have these images coming in. And the quality of the images as well, the Absolutely detail, and that you were talking about, you know, different difficulties of scale. How, right. how far away 
It, it, are the pictures taken from the comet? So this is there? the closest view we've, we've ever had as, of a comet. And in fact, when you talk about the scale, some of these photographs uh, so were down to less than big, a metre. Sorry for interrupting. How big would... So the whole thing um, is a... It's a couple of miles across. It's, a, it's been described as a duck shape. So it's about a couple of miles in each direction. So mm. it's a sort of a fairly fat body. And how far above the comet is the, uh, the pictures taken? So I think at the moment, I think the, the, the probe is about 18 miles, but it did do a, a very deep dip when the Philae lander actually landed on the comet. Mm. You might be remember that that happened a couple of months ago. They did a very deep dip to try and get a, a close photograph of where the, the thing might be because it actually bounced a little bit from its landing site. That's a bit dangerous as we get closer to the sun because the thing will start to off gas and you actually might zap the mothership if you like so they're they're discussing at the moment whether they might do another how long, closer fly how long will this comet sorry for interrupting how long will this comet be around for because you called it a dirty great snowball well, so been, the, we the think implication it's been around for about is, is four or five billion years so far so we think it's probably got it's so we've got loads of longer. time to, to to keep and it, and is this by what we're doing now with the Rosetta probe are we going to learn to be able to use other comets to get different information yes. are there opportunities to yeah do i mean that? this is the this is the most detailed study that we've ever had of a comet. I mean, before this, there was a mission called Stardust, where the actual dust in the, the tail from the comet, some of those particles were gathered. We have micrometeorites that, that land at the poles on the Earth, and we can gather those. And we know that they have similar content of, of various chemicals to these, these cometary tails. But this is an absolute phenomenal feat of engineering. To be able to orbit you know, a comet as it travels around the solar system and even land a lander on it and to actually see what the thing's made of. I mean, this is the closest view we've ever had of a body in the solar system. Right now. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's coming up to a minute past nine. Despite a Scottish...